Hi gang, this is Eric White. Today I'm going to show a cool technique where you can generate OpenXML documents using T4 templates. I'm going to show this approach generating a docx, but this approach will work equally as well for presentations and spreadsheets. T4 templates are a capability of Visual Studio 2008 and above that enable you to create these interesting little templates and then generate code as part of the Visual Studio editing process. In addition, you can use the T4 template engine standalone. I'm going to show how to do that too today. First thing I'm going to do is create a console project. It'll be a Windows project, .NET Framework 4, console application. First thing I'm going to do is a super quick demonstration of T4 text templates so you understand what they're about. I'll come over to the Solution Explorer. I'll say that I want to add a new item. I'll go to General, and I want to add a text template. I'll change the name of it to gendocx.tt. Visual Studio gives this security warning. I'll turn that off. I'm going to replace the contents of this text template with some other content. Here is a super small template. This text template specifies that the output extension is .xml. It specifies that I want to use two assemblies, system.xml and system.xml.link. T4 text templates are pretty link friendly, so we're going to use link. And I am going to import the system.xml.link namespace. This is the equivalent of a using statement at the beginning of a C-sharp program or an import statement at the beginning of a vb.net program. Now I'll save this and you can see over here in Visual Studio it's already generated a gen.docx.xml and if I open that XML I can see the results of that text template. All I did was save the text template and it generated this gen.docx.xml as part of the saving process. Let's go back and look at that text template again. Up here we have this code block that is bracketed by the less than hash and hash greater than. This code instantiates a new X element and sets a variable E to that new X element. And if we look down here, we can see the root element for that XML document, and we can see the equivalent of an expression hole, where there's an E right in the middle of the less than hash equals and the hash greater than. And that little template generates this XML. Now let's do something interesting with Word. I'll start Word. I'll put in some text. I'll format that as title. And I'll put a little bit of text in here so I can find the spot in the document when I want to. I'll put in AAA. Now I'm going to save this document, but I am going to save it in a different way than normal. I'm going to go save as. I'm going to save it as a Word XML document. And I'll call it test. So I'm saving test.xml. Now I'll close Word. I'll come back over to Visual Studio and I'm going to go open that test.xml. This test.xml is in the flat OPC format. The flat OPC format is a sort of variation on OpenXML where instead of saving the XML in a zip file, it saves the entire contents of the docx as one big XML document. Binary parts are saved as base64 ASCII. 
all of the relationships are serialized as little XML parts inside of this larger XML document. If you want to find out more about the flat OPC format, you can look at a series of blog posts that you can find at this link. I'm going to format this XML and I'm going to copy all of this XML. I'll copy it to the clipboard and I'm going to go over to my gen docx.tt and I'm going to paste this XML directly into my text template. I'm pasting the entire Word document directly into the text template. Now I'm going to replace this little bit of test code with some different linked XML code. And here we have a bit of code that declares the Word namespace, the W colon namespace that we see all the time in Word processing ML documents. And it also instantiates an X element named E. It initializes it to a new paragraph that contains the text of Hello World. And down here, I can find that paragraph that I entered AAA into. I'm going to replace that entire paragraph with less than hash equals E and hash greater than. I'll save it. And now when I double click on this gen docx.xml, I have a word processing ML document that contains hello world as text. That's pretty slick. Let me just show you again how simply you can change that document. I'll come over here. I'll change hello to goodbye. Save it. Double click on gen docx.xml and the document is changed. Visual Studio is a great place to develop your text templates. However, you may have a scenario where you don't want to have the user be running Visual Studio and have to go into an editor in Visual Studio and change their template and then generate the document in Visual Studio. You may need to run this in an automated fashion and you want to automate this from a console application or some other scenario. The way that we do this is to create a custom text template host. Let's step through that process. We're going to use the same console application to build our custom text template host. On MSDN, there is this topic, creating a custom text template host. You can find this topic at this location. This topic has almost all the code that we need to write our host. We need this c -sharp code here. This C-sharp code is a little console application that takes an argument of a text template and then executes the text template engine on that text template. I'll copy the code. I'm going to select the entire contents of program.cs and paste that code in there. We need to add a couple of references. Here I'll add the reference. I'll sort my components by name so it's easier to find the component that I need. Here are the two assemblies that I need. Microsoft.VisualStudio.TextTemplating.10.0 and Microsoft.VisualStudio.TextTemplating.Interfaces.10.0 these assemblies are installed when you install the Visual Studio SDK. I'll click OK and that allows these references over here to resolve. We have one more thing that we have to fix. We need to modify this resolve assembly reference method very slightly so it will resolve the system.xml and system.xml.link assemblies. The engine is going to transform a text template into a bunch of C-sharp code. It's then going to compile that C-sharp code and then it needs to resolve assembly references. And whereas when we did this in Visual Studio, 
system.xml and system.xml.link were resolved automatically. That's not the case when you build a custom text template host. Down here, there's a comment in this method that says, this could be customized to search specific paths for the file or to search the GAC. Well, what we want to do is search the GAC. Now, the API for the GAC is actually an unmanaged API. Well, fortunately, on MSDN, Junfen Zeng has written a GAC wrapper. So here is this code gacwrap.cs. I'm going to grab all of this code exactly as is. I'll copy it to the clipboard. Over here, I'll create a new item. It's going to be a class. I'll call the class gacwrap.cs. And I'll select the entire contents of gacwrap.cs and paste in the code from Jenfeng's blog. He put it into a namespace, system.gac-managed-access. So let's copy the name of that namespace, go to the beginning of our program.cs, and put in a using statement for that. And now, down here in this method, resolve assembly reference, I'm going to insert a bit of code. This bit of code calls a method in Jungfan's GACRAP module. It attempts to take an assembly reference and resolve and get the complete path to that assembly. And if it gets it, it returns it. And if it doesn't, then it just does what it did before, which is return quote quote. One last small modification to this class this custom command line host class needs to be marked as serializable. And it wasn't marked as serializable in the MSDN topic, so I'll mark it as serializable. I'll save it and build the application. I'll come back over to Windows Explorer. We can see here this text template that we just developed. I am going to copy that text template, and I'm going to go to bin debug, and I'm going to paste that text template in that directory. So now in this directory, I have this executable that we just built. I also have the gen docx.tt that we just created a little bit ago. I'll right click on the debug node, and I'll open a command prompt at this location. I'll enter the name of the executable, and I'll enter the name of the T4 template, and press Enter. And it comes back after a second, and it generated an XML document. If I double-click on that XML document, there is our generated document. And just to show you, I can edit this text template change the text to hello happy world, save it, close it, come back to the console window, rerun the program, open up the document and it has hello happy world. Now you can see that I generated this as an XML document. It's generated as one of those flat OPC documents. It's pretty trivial to modify this code to generate a docx or to transform that XML document to a docx. You can find the code to do that at this location. I'll leave that as an exercise for you. All of this code is attached to the blog post that introduces this screencast on OpenXML Developer, so you can easily recreate this particular experiment. That's all I'm going to cover in this video. I think text templates are pretty cool. 
They're a pretty cool way to develop powerful techniques in Visual Studio, and they can be very useful in generating OpenXML documents. Come back often to openxmldeveloper.org and see the new content that we're constantly producing. You can follow me on Twitter at ericwhitedev. You can follow OpenXML on Twitter at openxmldev. And you can find my personal blog at ericwhite.com. Thanks for watching.